Welcome to Grand Cayman. Grand Cayman is one of three islands that make up the Cayman Islands, a British overseas territory with a total population of approximately 84,000. Grand Cayman is the largest of three islands, spans 76 square miles, and is 22 miles long. There are many things to do around the island, like enjoying a beach day, interacting with stingrays, or exploring downtown Georgetown. So in this video, I'll be sharing things to do in the Georgetown area, easily accessible from the cruise ports. But before I jump in, don't forget to check out my other videos from our cruise, where I share all about our experiences on board and in port, linked in the description below. Now let's get started. We begin our day by getting a tender from the ship to shore. And it was a much better tender experience than our day in Great Stirrup Key. The ride didn't take too long to get ashore, but because of the weather, we were located in a different port than we anticipated. So that added even more time on our journey to get to Georgetown. It was actually quite chaotic when we got ashore and we didn't know where the transportation was, but we finally figured it out and got on a bus headed for town. We finally made it here after quite the journey. We were supposed to go to one pier, but it was damaged due to the high winds and storm. So we had to go to a different one, which is located about a 15 to 20 minute drive away without traffic. And this morning we had lots of traffic. So it took us a bit longer to get here. But now we are in the downtown area where we were originally intended to be. And we found out that we are the only cruise ship in port the other ships had to be turned away because they just didn't have the infrastructure to take more than one ship in today because of the damage. So that's pretty exciting for us because there have been some wild winds and storms this past week and other ships didn't get to come in today. We are going to explore and see what we can find in the downtown area. We aren't doing a tour, we're just going to be looking around on our own. Our first stop this morning is at Fort George, which is a historical spot here. They have some pretty murals behind us and some signage letting you know more about this fort. It was originally built in 1790 to protect the islands from intruders. And as you can see, it's a little windy here. So I think in the historic days, the walls would have provided more protection, but right now <laughs> there's no protection from the wind. It was built in the shape of an oval measuring approximately 57 by 38 feet and had 10 cannons and a mahogany gate on the land side. The walls were made of coral and limestone rubble ranged in thickness from two feet on the land side to five feet on the seaside. Another thing to do in Georgetown is pose in front of the Grand Cayman mural for a quick photo op. It's located right beside Fort George. Hero Square is another free attraction you can check out in the downtown area. It's dedicated to their national heroes and there's a nice fountain in the center, a beautiful courtyard area, and you can read more about this area on the signs. We spent a few minutes looking around at the monuments and plaques to learn more about the area, but we had to seek shade pretty quickly because it was very hot in the sun. This seemed to be a business area and we found even more pretty murals here for anyone who's interested in checking out the street art. Then we were on to our next attraction. Our next stop of the day is the National Museum. Let's go inside and check it out. The museum is open from 9 to 5 on weekdays and 10 to 2 on Saturdays. So it was $8 US per person to come into the National Museum and the first thing is it starts off with a show and it's ready to go right now. The show was about 10 minutes long and shared more about the island's history and interesting information. We enjoyed touring around the different areas of the museum to take in the displays and if you're a museum fan or just like learning more about the destinations you're visiting, this is a pretty nice stop. I would definitely add the museum to your list of things to do if you're here because it was a great way to learn about the islands and they had a very informative video that played, I think it was about 10 minutes or so, that gave you more history and information. So now as we're touring around, we're actually gonna have a little bit more appreciation for what we're seeing. Now, because of the wild weather we had on this cruise, we weren't able to go into the main port. So this area here is where we should have been dropped off, right in the Georgetown area. As you can see, there was lots of damage, but that didn't take away from the incredible seaside views 
turquoise waters, and beautiful sunshine. However, if you're visiting Grand Cayman as a port stop, I hope that you have better weather and can get right into this port where all of the action is. Here you can see all of the vendor stalls in the port area that would have been open if our ship was able to get into this port. We'll just have to come back one day in the future. I thought I would share a few facts with you if you are coming here in the future and want to be prepared for your visit. The first is that Georgetown is the capital of Cayman Islands. The second is their dollar is the Cayman Island dollar, but they also use US dollars here as well. And we went to the museum earlier and we paid with Visa. So most stores here also accept Visa, MasterCard, and maybe even American Express. Another thing to note is that pretty much everyone we've encountered speaks English, so language shouldn't be a problem. Another thing you can do if you're visiting is go diving, and Cayman Diving is located right near the main port area. They offer various experiences here, including snorkeling, night diving, private charters, and more. But we're more interested in sightseeing, and here you can see even more of the destruction we encountered on our visit. Unfortunately, it seems like a lot of this waterfront area was damaged due to the high winds and storms that were coming through here. So a lot of the restaurants are working really hard to get their areas cleaned up so that they can host guests. Um, as you can see behind me, this is all kind of like destroyed and the docks are broken, the stairs are up on the beach here, so hopefully they can get it sorted out quick. If you're a foodie or just want to enjoy some waterfront dining, there are many options to choose from. So you can definitely add dining around the city or having a drink at a waterfront bar to your itinerary to take in more of the beautiful ocean views. And if you're interested in interacting with the stingrays, you can add a stingray tour to your itinerary as well. There's a tour office downtown or you can book a tour through the ship. Another activity in Georgetown is shopping. And there is no shortage of options here when it comes to spending money on souvenirs, clothing, and other items. Downtown, there are also lots of people handing out flyers and discount brochures to get you into the stores. This is especially the case for the jewelry stores. Many of them offer free gifts just for coming inside, but then try to sell you on something while you're there. If you're interested in buying jewelry while you're in town, there are plenty of options. If you don't have an excursion or tour booked when you're in this port, there really isn't a lot to do. We've been walking around for the last two, two and a half hours on our own, and what we've noticed is it's primarily shopping and restaurants and bars. So if you want to do some shopping or eat at some restaurants and have a drink at a bar here, then I would recommend coming on your own and just wandering around the city. It is very picturesque because there's many beautiful waterfront views here. However, if you want to see something outside of the city, I would recommend doing a tour so that you can get more of the island experience. If we come back, we will probably do a tour so that we can see more of what this island has to offer. We decided to head back to the ship after about three hours exploring the downtown area. The buses were picking up cruise passengers behind the Bayshore Mall, and after finding a bus, we waited about 20 minutes until it was absolutely packed before the bus driver brought us back to the port area. Back at the port, you can see the bus pickup and drop off area and the makeshift market that was set up with vendors selling souvenirs and other merchandise. There was also a public washroom building here in front of where the tours departed from, which was very convenient. Time to go back to the ship. There was no lineup to get back onto the tender boat and our wait time was minimal to leave for the ship. So from that perspective, it was actually a great experience overall. Taking a tender also gives you great views of the island and the ship if you want to take any photos or videos like we do.
And that was our short day in Georgetown. Well, that's it for our day here in Georgetown Grand Cayman. I hope this video can be helpful for you if you're planning a trip here in the future and wondering what there is to do. Like I said, we were just touring around on our own because we didn't feel like doing a tour. However, if we could come back, I would definitely recommend doing a tour so that you can get outside of the city and see what the island has to offer. If this video was helpful for you, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Coming up, I'll be sharing our experience visiting Cozumel, and it may have just been my favorite port on this cruise, so stay tuned for that.